And we are back. Week number two of the Waffle. It starts on Thursday night. The Nighthawks and the Huskies tied up at three. And Herbert, he zips it to Devonta Smith, who breaks two tackles on his way to the end zone. He won't be denied. And now Nighthawk ball. Bryce Young slings it out to his left. Intercepted. Kevin Byard is in the area. Goes up and plucks that one away. And so now the Huskies starting at the 20. Third and nine for Herbert. X-Factor lit up here. Stepping up and firing to the corner of the end zone. There's Puka Nakua. What a free agent pickup by the Huskies. Now Nighthawks. Down 14. Devon A-Chain rumbles down to the eight-yard line. First and goal. This time, not going so well. Fumbles it. The Huskies recover. A great drive. Ruined with the fumble. Fumbleitis is running rampant this week. Now, Herbert putting some touch on this ball. And Puka Nakua is back. Breaks a tackle and makes his way to the end zone. Second touchdown. Huskies win it. 24-6 in full control. And now they're 2-0. and and now let's go to Houston. The Mounties versus the Oilers. Mountie ball. They're up 6-0. And Kareem Hunt getting the ground game going here inside the red zone with that carry. Next carry, Hunt off tackle and off to the races. Mounties score. They go up 13-0. Oilers trying to get some points together, trying to get this offense. And there it is. Big pass play over the middle to Pat Fryermuth. They'll get three points out of it. So now Mounties. Up 10, Carr evading the pressure, throwing on the move, and nice catch by Duvernay, but he coughs it up. The Oilers recover deep inside their own territory. They can't do anything with it. And here, Baker intercepted a tough throw into coverage, and Micah Hyde comes away with it, runs it back to the 45-yard line. And then at the other end of the field, Carr throws it to the back, out of the backfield. Kareem Hunt strikes again. Mounties take care of business. Carr is looking finely tuned, and they win 22-3. Now let's go to Paris. The Shamrocks versus the Voyagers. Voyagers ball in the first quarter. Sam Darnold rolling out to his left. Ball underthrown for the end zone. They'll have to settle for the field goal, but they go up 3 to nothing. Now end of the first. Shamrocks driving the ball. C.J. Stroud nearly intercepted by Daryl Loud. So Stroud to Loud. Here comes the field goal. We're tied. Two minutes to go in the second. Ball in the dirt. One more field goal. Nine to six. End of the half. Darnold getting the Voyagers down inside the red zone again with the sideline grab. And he goes to his tight end, Mike Gusecki. First Voyagers touchdown of the new year. And so Voyagers with a one-point lead. Stroud connects with Jahan Dotson, spins away. One spins from one, and he's off to the races. Touchdown, Shamrocks, 18 to 13. We got a weird score in the fourth, but the Shamrocks offense stopped on third and one. Voyagers with a chance to tie this one up, and a diving grab by Carlos Royals, fastest man in the draft. And now Royals again, back of the end zone, two feet down, two point conversion. We'll tie this game up, and Eckler goes up the middle. Second effort gets it. We're going into overtime here. Shamrocks hit the ball. Play action. Stroud going deep. And here, DJ Moore, he's got a step. He's got more than a step. And now Shamrocks, ball at the 10. They're going to pitch it out left to Donta Foreman, who's going to go into the end zone untouched for the win. And so the Shamrocks drive down in overtime and win this one 27 to 21. Now we go to the Thunderbirds and the Armadillos down in Austin. And Armadillos ball down three. Jared Goff slinging this one for the end zone. Tight window. But the rookie Paul Schultz comes away with it. Seven to three now. Garter Minshew. Oh, he's under pressure. Takes a sack from Frank Clark. Goff in the red zone. Armadillos driving. Brees Hall gets down to the one. Stopped just a yard short. So third and goal. Stopped again. Can't punch it in. They settle for the field goal. Seven-point game in the second. Minshew airing it out. Jump ball. And Chase Claypool takes this one and runs with it down to the 20. Now same drive. Third and 10. Minshew over the middle. Oh, that was a busy middle of the field. 
and he paid for an interception. Armadillos now in the third. Goff running for his life, third quarter and into the fourth. This man was sacked three, four times. Goff holding on to the ball and getting drilled. There's Max Crosby, second and 20. Crosby on a mission, just throwing him into the turf. Still a seven-point game. Minshew on the move, going back to his main target. Claypool with another jump ball grab. Fourth and three. Najee Harris thrown backwards into the end zone. Tie game, just 30 seconds left. But Goff, he's got Schultz wheeling route down the sideline, plus a little face mask. So here comes the game-winning kick, and it's good. Armadillos win 16-13. The Thunderbirds lose by the last second field goal in the first two weeks of the season. Now we go to Salt Lake City. It's Caps versus Elks. Caps ball in the first. And Brian Robinson takes the handoff. Some tough running here towards the goal line. First and goal from the two. And Mahomes is going to pull this ball in and rush it in himself. Caps up seven to nothing. And now Mahomes dropping back, finding his tight end, Evan Ingram, for the score. 14 nothing. Elks ball in the second. And Anthony Richardson finds Rashad Bateman down the field in the red zone. Now the Elks looking to throw, but Richardson cuts it upfield on the ground, takes it in himself. We had a seven-point game, but the Caps come right back. Diving effort there by Evan Ingram. Wanted that second touchdown, but Mahomes going to pass it to Wandale Robinson. He eventually gets in 21-7 in the third. Make it 28. Mahomes Next with Evan Ingram for his second there, 28-7. And Richardson doesn't see anyone open. He's going to loop around the entire defense, go up the sideline, but he's drilled, and the ball comes loose. They get the ball back, fourth and two. Can't convert. Last few seconds on the clock. We get a little garbage time touchdown for the Elks. Good throw, though, on the move to Quentin Johnson, 34-14. This was a battle of some of the tougher teams of last season, but the Caps look far and away the better team. Now we head down to San Antonio. The Dreadnoughts and the Orbits going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Jalen Hurts fires this one out to his right in the Orbit strike first. Jordan Addison with the touchdown. And later into the second, Hurts fires this one down the seam. And it's Jordan Addison for touchdown number two, 14 to 3. Oh no, Hurts. Makes his first big mistake. The Dreadnoughts intercept this one. Great field position for Russell Bowman. But he is sacked by fellow first rounder Lloyd Rathman. They'll settle for the field goal. 14-6 now. Orbit's in the red zone and it's Hurts to Nelson Aguilar. 21-6 now. Then it's Hurts changing direction and tucking this ball in and running it to the end zone. Orbit's taking a huge lead here. 28-6. Dreadnoughts, only three minutes to go in this game. Finally score their touchdown. Dante Pettis going across the middle. Two-point conversion off the mark. 28-12, two minutes to go. Miles Sanders going off tackle. Bouncing off a lineman and going all the way to the end zone. Orbit's now up 35-12. But the Dreadnoughts still fighting with under a minute to go. Some nice touch on that pass. Dante Pettis. Getting a lot of catches here towards the ends of the game. But 35-20 is the final. Orbits take this one. Now let's go to Oakland. The Redwoods versus the Steamers. Play action pass. Great block in the backfield. Derrick Henry giving Geno the time to find Michael Thomas for the score. Then the very next play for the Steamers. Intercepted. The Redwoods corner. Steven Nelson takes it away. Now Redwoods with excellent field position, and Geno delivers a strike to his tight end, Dalton Schultz, 14-0. Geno rolling right, throwing down the middle. Now he's intercepted. James Bradbury undercuts this ball, going to Michael Thomas. But Geno Smith to Michael Thomas gets their revenge. Bradbury in pursuit. But he won't get a Michael Thomas second touchdown catch in the Redwoods. Pulling away 21-3. Burrow under pressure. Isaiah Foskey with his second sack right there. Now into the fourth. And Burrow is intercepted one more time. 
this Redwood defense blanketing the receivers 24 to 3 and Gino going over the shoulder to Devonte Adams plenty of weapons on this Redwoods team 31 to 3 and the steamers finally break through Drake London with the touchdown catch there and then the onside kick bobbled but the Redwoods maintain possession and here they just run out the clock perfect blocking Derrick Henry untouched to the end zone and the Redwoods put up 38 on the steamers thanks in part to Geno Smith's monster day four touchdowns over 300 yards now we head to London the Black Knights versus the Aviators Aviators ball fourth and goal and they're stuffed the Black Knights defense holds strong but the Aviators will try again Jamal Williams stiff arm down inside the 10 yard line third and goal and here he goes, untouched to the end zone. Jamal Williams gets his touchdown after all. 7-0. Matt Stafford, lots of time, holding on to the ball. And he fumbles, sack fumble. Going to give the Aviators another goal line chance. And another touchdown for Jamal Williams. 14-0. And this time, the screen from Jordan Love to Williams. Third straight touchdown to Jamal Williams game. Now into the fourth, Black Knights, things are not looking good. Matt Stafford sacked his third sack by Artie Dunlap, the first rounder. And now Stafford finally connects. They break through with Romeo Dobbs. Now just a minute, 30 left to go, second and one. And Stafford, he's going to take a shot downfield. This one's a bomb inside the five, and George Pickens comes down with it. A couple of Georges on that play. And now Stafford, fourth and goal. They can't get it to fall. Under a minute would have been tough. 24 to 10. The Aviators win this one. Black Knights off to a poor start. Next up, we have the Sentinels and the Pioneers in Portland. Sentinel ball. And Jameis Winston delivers a nice throw to Tim Patrick. Tackled at the one. So they go fullback dive next play. In the tight end, Elton Culver gets the TD. 7-0 Sentinels. Winston steady in the pocket there's tim patrick on the crosser going for a touchdown that he missed earlier so 14 to nothing pioneers with the ball and here comes the blitz desmond ritter didn't see it coming he got stripped pioneers struggling in the first half sentinels looking to punch it in right before halftime but winston doing winston things throws an interception this is a pick six by the rookie the Pioneers don't do much well, but they drafted a couple of good rookie corners in the second and third round. There's Glenn Ellison, 17-7. And Tony Pollard taking over, picks up a block and goes all the way down for the score. Sentinels up 17 now, but Pioneers driving. And Desmond Ritter throws it up for grabs on fourth and three. But the Sentinels defense holds strong. Final score, 24-7. Sentinels 1-1, one one, Pioneers 0-2. Oh Next up, it's Snowhawks versus Bisons in Oklahoma City. couple of former playoff teams. And Daniel Jones, he's got Darius Slayton outrunning the entire Snowhawks secondary to start this game. 7-0. Now Trevor Lawrence, he is sacked. Bisons D-line causing all kinds of havoc this game. That wouldn't be the last. Now Daniel Jones... Gets a taste of his own medicine. Aiden Hutchinson there, third and five. He connects with the young tight end, Rhett Madden, superstar X Factor, first rounder, making an impact. 17 to nothing here in the third. Daniel Jones, pocket collapsing. Cam Hayward gets in there. First and goal. Snowhawks with a chance to put some points up, but Trevor Lawrence sacked. There's more Bison's defenders. Third and goal, sacked again. Dexter Lawrence in there. And so fourth and goal, they got to go for it. Field goal not good enough. Trevor Lawrence throws it way under thrown. Snowhawks all out of whack. They can't put up a single point. 17 to nothing. The Bisons 2-0 and and looking strong. Next, we head to Vancouver. The Lumberjacks take it on the Tigers. And Jacoby Brissett for the Lumberjacks just under all sorts of pressure this first half sack there. Very next play, sacked again, Joey Bosa, and then rushed up the middle, Brissett sacked. The man was beaten to a pulp, and yet they still have the lead. An important play here, Kirk Cousins takes a shot on this throw. 
and in comes Hendon Hooker, and he provides a much-needed spark to the offense. Suddenly, Mo Alley-Cox is wide open in the end zone, and the man doesn't throw a single incompletion, firing it into traffic. Ten Lumberjacks in the area, doesn't matter. Damian Pierce up the gut, and now the Tigers. They go into the fourth, eight-point lead, second and seven, and the Tigers go back to Pierce, sealing the game with a big run. Lumberjacks out of timeouts, final score 17 to nine, and move to one and one on the year. Next up, we go to Omaha, the Antlers and the Condors doing battle. The Condors with the ball, and Justin Fields, the reigning MVP, using his legs to get down inside the 10 yard line. Second and goal, Fields does it again, slips a tackle, and he is into the end zone. Condors up seven. Nothing. Now 7-3 later in the first. In fields, he can't get away this time. Dean Lowry levels him on that play. One point game now into the second quarter. In fields, fires it down to the one yard line. There's his main target, Mark Andrews. But here on first and goal, fields backs way up, takes a terrible sack. And so they only get a field goal. 10-6, Josh Allen. He's got his own tight end down inside the 20. So red zone for the Antlers, and Josh Jacobs takes it the rest of the way untouched there. And so now the Antlers, with a three-point lead, give up the big play to K.J. Osborne. Fields fires that one down the middle. Condors take back the lead, but just a one-point game here in the first. But Fields is not done firing. Finds K.J. Osborne again. So now Antler's ball, the game is getting away from him. Josh Allen on third down, sacked. Grady Jarrett was there, fourth and 13. This could be the game, nearly intercepted, ball batted around. And there is our final, 27 to 16, the Condors win. They'll jump to one and one, Antlers though, 0 and two. Now we go over to London, the Dragons and the Desperados. And down three, Dragons have the ball near the red zone, but Kyler Murray, Pegs a defender in the back. They'll get the field goal tied at three. Back in the red zone, second quarter. Dragons down to the one yard line. They're going up the gut. And Jameer Gibbs finishes the drive with the touchdown. 10 3. Dragons up. Trey Lance now. Nice pocket. Just forces this one into coverage. And it's going back inside the 10 yard line. There's Mike Hughes going up high and taking that one away. 13 3. Desperados down 10. Lance, looking like playoff Lance, going to Debo Samuel at the 7. But third and goal, rolling to his right. Can't connect in a crowd. They'll set up for the field goal. Still a 7-point game. Dragons, sacked. Kyler Murray goes down hard, so the Desperado defense steps up. Can the offense do anything about it? Lance, looking to his right, intercepted again. And so now the Dragons... Taking advantage, third and four, they punch it in. TJ Hawkinson, the tight end with the touchdown, 20 to six in the fourth. The Dragons aren't done yet. Kyler Murray unleashes a deep pass downfield. Hollywood Brown down to the two, so close. Here comes a fullback dive, the Dragon dive. Goes to tight end Lucas Haynes. And 27-26 is the score, but the Dragons aren't done yet. Turning it on here. In the latter half of this game, Jameer Gibbs gets his second touchdown and the Dragons dominating performance, 37-6 final score. Look out, they're 2-0. And now the Golden Eagles and the Wizards. Golden Eagle ball in the first. Steve Weiss dropping back. He is hit. The ball comes loose. There's linebacker Alex Highsmith high stepping it into the end zone. The classic scoop and score. Golden Eagle lineman diving but missing. Wizards up 16 in the second, off to a fast start. And Golden Eagles, the troubles continue. They lose high 90s overall tackle, Laramie Tunsil. And then in the second, Weiss, more of the same. Daniil Hunter with the sack. But a minute left in the half, Weiss fires it down the seam. And there's Alan Lazard refusing to be brought down. Golden Eagle touchdown now in the third. It's a three-point game. But Tyreek Hill is unleashed, burning two corners in the process. Wizards go back up 10. Now Golden Eagles in the red zone. In the fourth quarter, Weiss takes a brutal sack. There's Alex Highsmith again. But on fourth and 20, the rookie QB 
finds the open receiver, Mike Williams. And now it's just three-point game yet again. Under two minutes, Brock Purdy sandwiched, brought down at the logo. Golden Eagles with a chance. Minute to go, Weiss hit, fumbled again. And guess who recovered it for their second touchdown? Alex Highsmith. Two touchdowns, a sack, and the Wizards seal the deal. 30-20 to 20 is our final score. Now we head to our Sunday night matchup in Memphis, the Blues versus River Hogs. Both teams 1-0, Russell Wilson spinning and throwing on the money to Jacoby Myers down inside the red zone. But third and five, Russell has his target just off the mark. They settle for the field goal. Now Gabriel Kinchin, great week last week. The passing numbers continue moving the ball down the field to the 24-yard line. Third and seven, play action. Blues D getting after him. Von Miller with the sack. We're tied at three. Now, River Hogs in the red zone. Getting the ball out to the six-yard line. There's Palmer. Now Kinchin setting up the screen. And Isaiah Pacheco does the rest. So River Hogs up 10-3. Under a minute left to play in the half. Pacheco again rumbling down to the 30-yard line, setting up the field goal. And we go into the half with a 10-point lead for the River Hogs. Their ball in the third. Kinchin fires it deep down the sideline. And receiver Josh Palmer gets both feet in. And so now the River Hogs in the red zone, up 13. And this time it's Kinchin to Cortland Sutton for the touchdown. River Hogs up 21 in the fourth. And then the Blues offense trying to mount a comeback, but there's a fumble. River Hogs recover. Nobody touches them. And so Trent McDuffie. It's going to scoot down the sideline for the score. And with that, the River Hogs are going to put up 31. You can see 32. Henderson punches the ball loose. And McDuffie does the rest. 31-3 to is the final. St. Louis goes hog wild on the Blues. And finally, we get to our Monday night game. The Bulls and the Monarchs here. The fastest sack you'll see all week, too. A one-step, two-step dropped. Monarch defense stepping up early. 0-0 later in the first. Tua, he's going to take a shot on this throw. But Garrett Wilson comes down with the ball. Spins around and is gone down the sideline. Bulls are going to take the early 7-0 lead. There's a flag on the play. But it's pass interference on the defense. Touchdown is safe. Now, LaMonarch Jackson eyeing the end zone. But he is rocked. Deron Payne with the big sack. Now Monarch ball down 7. Jackson. Can't get away from this defense. Tim Settle in the backfield. Third and 18. But Lamar poised in the pocket. He's got Dalton Kincaid, the tight end, down the seam. Is he going to get caught? Barely gets there in time. Defenders diving just a little too late. Tied at 10. Third quarter to a pocket collapsing around him. Hanging on to the ball a bit too long there. Two minutes to go in the third. Monarchs driving. Can't convert. So the field goal will get them the lead 13 to 10. Bulls get the ball right back to a fires one intercepted. Tried to fit one in there, but it's Amani Hooker who steps in the way for the pick. Now Monarchs in the red zone. Jackson surveying the field, tucking and running and finally getting away from this Bulls defensive line. Nice juke and he is in for the score. Monarchs 20, Bulls 13. Four minutes left to go in the game. And DeAndre Swift takes the swing pass, spins out of one tackle, but has popped and the ball comes loose. You can see on the replay, 53 brings the hammer down on DeAndre Swift, and that seals the game. 23-13, the Monarchs are now 2-0. And with that, week two of the Waffle has come to a close. Some good games this week. And here's our players of the week. The two Justins get the nod, Herbert and Fields at quarterback. Then on defense, Daniil Hunter, four sacks for the Wizards. And Artie Dunlap, the rookie, he brought home three and a half sacks, a forced fumble, and five tackles for the Aviators. Now it's standings time, and number one in the AFC East is the Caps. No surprise there. They're playing lights out. Still riding high after their Waffle Bowl win. Behind them is the Orlando Orbits, the Brooklyn Snowhawks at 1-1, one and, one, and the Virginia Beach Steamers 0-2. Burrow and that offense are not looking quite the same. A team that actually beat the Caps last year is in rough shape. Then in the AFC North, the River Hogs are at the top at 2-0. 
and they've only given up 12 points against, you can see on the column there. Meanwhile, teams like the Blues and the Antlers, they just don't feel the same. Last year, they weren't giving up this many points. Blues, 47 points against, Antlers, 55. We'll see if they can turn it around, but in the AFC South, the Bisons still top the division at 2-0. Dreadnoughts, Oilers, Armadillos, all 1-1. I think we might be looking at another year where the Bisons run away with this division. That defense is tough to crack. And then in the AFC West, the Redwoods rise to the top 2-0. 52 points scored through the first two games. Strong offensive showing. Sentinels, Condors, they're 1-1. One one. You have to imagine the Condors will be neck and neck with them as the weeks go on. And sadly, the Pioneers still can't win. They're 32nd ranked in the Waffle 0-2. Now over to the international side of things, the Dublin Shamrocks, the London Dragons, looking pretty good out of the gates here. Voyagers, Black Knights, not so much, especially the Black Knights. The offense has been putrid. Now let's make our way to the north. The Huskies sit at 2-0, a complete flip from last year. They actually went 0-3, rallied and made the playoffs. So there's still hope for the Thunderbirds and Lumberjacks who sit at 0-2. Kind of a surprise, I think we were used to seeing this as one of the stronger divisions in the Waffle. And now to the NFC South. To many, this was our laughing stock division, but then the Desperados proved us wrong in the playoffs and went on a run to the NFC Championship game. So I'm not gonna do it this year. We'll see what happens. One, one, and one. Wizards, Nighthawks, Desperados, Golden Eagles, 0 and two, but they got a rookie QB. They're figuring things out. We can't rule them out yet. And lastly, to the NFC West, this could be a division that goes back and forth, fluctuates all season long. I like the Bulls, the Elks, the Monarchs, even the Tigers seem a little bit improved if they play Hendon Hooker. He's been unstoppable in his brief stint there as the backup. Do they stick with Cousins? Do they make the switch? I don't know. A lot could hang on the balance of one QB change. And so with that, we wrap up week number two. Week number three looks like a good slate of games. The Dragons and the River Hogs, something's got to give. Someone's going home with their first loss of the season. There's just eight undefeated teams left in the waffle. So comment below. Let me know your thoughts on the first two weeks of the waffle. And I'll see you for week number three.